Hello and welcome. This time we're doing, going to talk about how to transfer signals. Okay. Last time we talked about analog and digital signals. Okay. This time we're going to talk about how to transfer those signals. Okay. Basically, there are two ways of transferring things. Yeah. There's the parallel way. Yeah. It's like there is one system. There is the other system, yeah. and we connect, to transfer one byte, we connect with eight lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I need a ninth line, the ground line, uh, zero volt. Uh, all eight bits uh, will be transferred in parallel. Yeah. Here I send one signal and the one is receiving this whole byte, the whole data chunk. So there is bit number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and this is ground. Yeah. And also here one, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here we have ground. Yeah. This is how this is working. Yeah. This is called parallel. Here's my blue pen. Because all bits are transferred in parallel. Yeah? And then there is the possibility that I do have here one system. I do have here the other system. I'm only using basically two wires. Yeah? One of them is again ground, yeah. and the other wire is the so-called data wire. How do I transfer now a whole byte? Simply by putting one bit after the other on the wire. Yeah. So I need to have here some sort of stack. Yeah. And here's some sort of stack. And one bit after the other is going here, transferred and pushed in here. Okay. This is empty, this is filled, so there needs to be some sort of logic behind. Yeah. There needs to be some sort of logic behind to get this bit by bit on the wire and bit by bit off the wire and if I have received the whole byte I need to inform whoever hey I have a new byte for you okay and also here I have to inform okay I transferred this byte please give me the next one so there needs to be some logic inside this is called serial serial here we have something, an old, old cable. Yeah. This is a parallel cable. You see, a lot of connectors here. Yeah. Parallel cable. And inside here, there are a lot of wires, which are transferring it to the other end, where again, a lot of connectors. Good. Yeah. Parallel cable. Yeah. Benefit of parallel things, I can transfer really a lot of data. When I transfer here a byte, I have here already eight bytes. Okay. Serial thing, we said, yeah, where is the cable, this one. You remember the USB cable from last, some videos before. Yeah. Only two wires. This is just for power supply here. Only two wires. These are the two wires. One is ground and one is data this one. Much less space, money, installing needed, zero. However, slower. Okay. But slower, faster, cheaper and so this is not the only one. The real issue here is that 
there are a lot of wires here parallel running yeah and if one wire and the other wire is running in parallel i get some sort of coupling between those two okay i get some sort of coupling inductive coupling capacitive coupling and so on so there is some some transferring the information on one wire to the neighbor wires yeah? and the longer the cable gets the better those wires are coupled together in an electromagnetic way yeah? so the longer the cable is yeah, the more the wire 3 is influencing all other wires yeah? and if the cable is then long enough here I tell something and on the other side I cannot understand because on every wire I hear just nonsense because I do not get the information of exactly this wire, I do not get the information of all the other wires on all wires. Yeah? So I cannot understand anymore what is being talked. Yeah? I don't have this problem here. Only one wire, who should the shell disturb me? Yeah? So this here we can use over long distances. This here is only short distances. So this is already some of the maximum possible. Yeah? These things here we usually use where it really gets to go fast yeah? and not that far. For instance, between our CPU and the memory in our computer. Parallel bus systems are there. Yeah? Serial bus systems or serial things we use where we want to talk faster or where we want to talk about longer distances. For, either, for instance, Ethernet or USB or something like this. Yeah, Ethernet, we can talk about kilometers even. Hmm? Serial systems. So it's parallel and serial systems. I also said something about bus. Yeah? Just mentioned bus system. What is bus system? Yeah? Basically, if two things are talking, we can put the cable between those two systems and they are talking to each other. Yeah? This here is called point to point. Point to point communication. Two Things talking to each other have one cable in between and they talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And then there is the possibility that uh, there are more than just two who wants to talk to each other. Yeah? And those, all these participants in the communication, they are sharing one media. Mm -hmm. This is a so-called bus communication. Yeah. Bus. This is a bus. So basically all participants are able to talk and hear what with all others. Hear to talk to all others and hear from all others. Yeah. It's like in the classroom. Yeah. When somebody is talking, all others can listen. They don't have to, but they should. <laughs> Yeah? If all are talking at the same time, nobody can understand anything. It's also the same thing here. So there must be some sort of logic which is somehow telling the participants now you are allowed to talk or you don't allowed to talk. Yeah? You have to listen. Now shut up and listen. Yeah? Now talk. Yeah? There are several things, yeah? there are several logics behind how this might be managed in when you're talking about measurement systems and so on. We'll go into this in detail. Yeah? So usually we often have bus systems yeah? where a lot of items, a lot of communication partners can talk to each other sharing one media bus system. Yeah? And now how is this coupling even done? Yeah? How can we, I said, I just place here or draw here a line, yeah? but how can this be? Yeah? So there is one system, the other system, and the simplest way of coupling it, yeah, two wires. Really just two wires, connected here, connected here, connected with wires. This is called a galvanic coupling. Galvanic coupling. 
sometimes it's not that good. Yeah? Why? Because sometimes if those two things are really far apart, let's say this is something in the field somewhere out, yeah? and this is in the control room, yeah? and here the flash is stroking this element, I don't want to burn my control room just because somewhere is a thunderstorm. So I need to, to get rid of this galvanic coupling. I need to isolate this somehow. Yeah? We already talked about fiber optics. Yeah? That was one possible combination. Yeah? That I have a system, another system. Yeah? Here I'm using wires. This one, I'm using this one. I'm using wires. And here there is a light source. Yeah? And here there is a resistor which somehow is able to distinguish and in between there is a light. Yeah? So there is no electric coupling. Yeah? There is no electric coupling. It is transferred by light. Fiber optics, for instance. Yeah? Optical. optical possibility of coupling two things. Yeah? Then we are isolated to each other. If the thunderstorm hits this, this will be destroyed. This will stay. Okay? But just using fiber optics because isolation is not always used. Yeah? There is also the possibility two things. Yeah? Then I am coupling it with the use of capacitors. Capacitive coupling. Yeah. It is not working for DC signals, of course, yeah. because DC will just load this capacitor and that's it. Yeah. Nothing will. But with AC signals, with signals which are changing, for instance, digital signals, this is working pretty well because for AC signals, a capacitor is just some sort of resistor capacitive coupling. Okay. Then, of course, there's the possibility, also here, it's isolated to each other, huh? because the capacitor is isolated. Okay. And, of course, there's the possibility of reducing a magnetic field, and on the other hand, I'm getting, I'm receiving the magnetic field, this is a magnetic coupling. Magnetic coupling. Also here is not working for DC signal. We have to use AC because if we have here an alternating current, it will produce an alternating, magne alternating magnetic field and this alternating magnetic field will produce here voltage okay? and ultimately current. Okay? If a constant magnetic field is not producing anything, yeah? they need to have an alternating magnetic field to produce uh, to induct something, to induct some voltage. So I need, this is only working for AC. Yeah? This is working for DC as well. Yeah? These are coupling methods. And of course, last but not least, I could always do it like this. Yeah? Go out. Here is some Wi-Fi transponder or whatever, and then I just transfer it over air, yeah, radio coupling. These are the possibilities of coupling two things. So we have parallel transmitting, serial transmitting, point-to-point -point communication, bus communication, and galvanic coupling, capacitive coupling, magnetic coupling, optical coupling, and radio coupling. This would be the possibilities on how two systems might talk to each other. Yeah. And now, since we know all the theoretic stuff, now we go into details. Yeah. Now we're going to uh, going to make some exercises. Yeah. 
we usually do point-to-point -point communication. Yeah. Uh, however, some of the systems we will get to know are also bus communications. Yeah. The first thing we are going to talk about is a serial system yeah, with which we let two Arduinos talk to each other simply by the serial interface of them. Yeah. This will then be next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.